They called this place the castle in the coal fields, and this place was infamous. Was that you? That was not me. Whoa. There is energy invested in this building, in this very valley. Dude. You never know what emotions have been imprinted into these walls. Can you step back? Whoa. These are the types of things that we should really look out for tonight because you never know when that energy is gonna present itself. Something just stepped in front of that light. Can you push that right off of there? Roll it right out of that window. Ooh, the hair on the back of my neck just stood up. Did you follow Jason here from Moundsville from the prison? Possibly. Behind you. Hell. <laughs> Dude. Right, Dave, we have been actually trying to set up this investigation for months now. Yes, we have. I am so excited for this one. Because this building has never been investigated before. No. It is the Itman Company store in the small town of Itman, West Virginia. This was the hub for the community. You name it, it was in here. These coal mining companies didn't pay their employees in money. They gave them script that they could only spend at the company store. So when these coal miners and their families needed to buy things, this was where they came. This was the center of their community. Yeah, this was very much the most important place to every citizen of Itman. This was their mega mart. This was their superstore of what we have today. This was it. Anything they needed, they came here for it. And it has been here since the 1920s, made out of the most beautiful stone that we've seen of any building. They considered it to be a castle in Itman. Yeah. And we are gonna walk around here while Jason interviews Dave, the realtor, and kind of get an idea of what this building looks like. So you ready to take a walk? More than ready. I am eager to check this place out. It looks amazing. Let's do it. Let's do it. Dave, here we are at the Itman Company Complex. What can you tell me about this historic location here? This is perhaps the quintessential coal company office store complex. There's nothing else like this that's ever been built. This is a later built complex. And this was the place when you lived in a, a company town like Itman, the store was everything. This is where, this is where everything went on. You, you bought everything here. You did all your socializing here. And many people who were kids will come here and they'll talk about when they were kids and they would visit this building. There's a lot of history here. A lot of memories. Amen. It's like you say, it's kind of the center point of a coal mining community is, is the company store. And this is where a lot of people's lives were and where they worked and relied on their uh, goods for their family and even the post office. Well, absolutely. And what you were saying about it being a center point, interestingly, when they built this store, they built the community around it. So there's these walls of, of houses. Everything was built to be around this store. This was the focus of the entire community. So what can you tell me in terms of you know, this side of the building, this side behind me, which areas serve what purposes? Like for example, the store, post office, and et cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay, well this behind me uh, was the store and anything you wanted, you could buy in this store. Upstairs you had uh, your uh, larger pieces, your furniture, uh, that was all located there. Uh, downstairs was where your dry goods were located, at least for the very beginning. This area was isolated. The company store was your connection to everything. So that's why this building is so important. Over here behind you is the, is the company offices uh, for the Pocahontas Fuel Company at first and later for Consolidated Coal Company. This is where you came to get your paycheck. This is where you went to talk about uh, what complaints you might have, you know, your, your financial issues with the company. This is where you went to find out possibly that you were fired. Then upstairs, Upstairs, which that was where the, the, the coal company officials were, had their offices. And 
that was a big to do, even being able to get up into that section of the of the building. Uh, not everyone could get up there, and you knew when you were in the top floor of the office building that uh, you were in high cotton. You were somebody. You were somebody, and you were having to meet with somebody. Wow. Ooh, a stairwell. Yeah, this goes up and out. I know we got a little bit of information from Dave over the phone, the realtor who's selling this building. And he told us that the upstairs area was one of the areas that was used as a homeless shelter. And so there might be some energy trapped up here from that. So let's walk up here and take a look at it. Let's do it. Yes, yes, in one of the last incarnations of, of businesses being in the building, there was a post office here for a time if, in the late years. Uh, there was a secondhand clothing store here where the uh, company store was. But in this other building, the office uh, space, they ended up putting in a, a homeless shelter for a, for a short time. This is crazy. This is. We talk about paranormal activity in the sense of spirits, intelligent ghosts speaking to us, but that's not always the way it works out. Places like this that are used so often every day can trap the residual activity and energy within their walls and replay it like a tape recorder, hearing footsteps, voices, talking. These are the types of things that we should really look out for tonight because you never know when that residual energy is going to present itself. Right. Every day, all day long, people were in and out of here, in and out of here. Um, you know, I'm sure some of them upset because they just lost their job. Maybe there was families in here because someone else in their family passed away in the mine or something like that. And they were told that news here. And um, yeah, you, you never know what emotions have been imprinted into these walls. So Dave, what can you tell me, has there been any reports of paranormal activity here at the Itman uh, company complex or any reason you have to believe that even more so that it's haunted? Well, a lot of people have been through this building. A lot of stuff has happened. There's a lot of lives that are seriously connected with this building in many ways. There is energy invested in this building, in this very valley. I mean, this, there were Indian trails here. There were certainly Indians that came through here on the Guy and Dot River, which flows right past the, the property here. So there's, there's something, there is an energy to this whole area that you don't find in all other areas of the state. Um, again, and there are places in the building that I will go with you guys, but if I'm just alone, I won't necessarily venture into those, who needs to go into those dark closed off areas of the building? Right, right. Oh, wow. And just like any good building, it always has a creepy basement. Uh, apparently. You want to go down here and check this basement out? Sure, we can go down, check it out. Hopefully there's no spiders, <laughs> but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> always on high spider alert, Dave. Always. My spidey senses are always tingling. <laughs> I know somewhere down here in this basement, they probably had a butcher shop where they would actually store the meat that they would then sell upstairs in the store. Probably. So, you know, you talk about refrigerator units and different things down here. This might have been a good use for this room. <laughs> Funny enough that I was talking about that. So right now you are currently selling the Itman Mining Complex. Yes, yes, I've had the honor of being asked to sell this incredible uh, building, which uh, my, you know, I come to Realty actually out of the field of historic preservation. Uh, we have so many buildings, properties across the globe, but certainly uh, throughout the U.S. and right here in West Virginia uh, that are buildings that they will never ever build again. And so as a preservationist, uh, my job had always been to try to find some way of saving these buildings. And it occurred to me at one point, maybe I can find new owners for buildings. And that's the situation here. The owner realized wasn't getting any younger. The building needs new life. And with tourism growing here, ATVing being so popular, it was time. I'm really excited to investigate the Itma Company store tonight and 
to see what paranormal activity we can capture in here in a building that has never been investigated and that doesn't have any stories coming out of it. So are you excited, Dave? Are you ready to set up abandonment and see what we can pick up? I think this one's gonna hold some stories, hold some secrets that I am excited to uncover and maybe on abandonment, they will come out and talk to us. I hope, let's do it. Let's do it. Rolling goes to this is the Itman building. Ah. How do you how do they say you have to put a cap on this one? Yeah, it is. I'm looking right at it. That looks strange, what? It was really weird. Jason is currently setting up the audio recorder. Uh, so we are gonna start tonight's investigation, just like we start most of our investigations. We are going to do an abandonment inside the- I'm trying. If you're trying to set off some of these things, you can touch some of these lights, make them light up so we know that you're here. I know this may look all very strange to you because no one's ever done this before, but our goal is to try and talk to you and to show people that there's something else beyond Island. this life. I don't even know what that said. Mm -hmm. that, that there's something else beyond this life. So if you could please come out and talk to us tonight, try and use our energy to speak to us, we'd greatly appreciate it. We have a camera set up here up in the area that was used for the offices of the coal company and then later on a homeless shelter. We also have a camera down in the basement over on the company store side where they would have done a lot of storage and where they would have had a lot of the food, meat, a lot of those storage areas down there as well. We also have a camera set up in the actual store space on the other building over there pointing out across that main floor where thousands and thousands of days of sales would have taken place inside that building. So we're hoping that our cameras and equipment can pick up on some residual paranormal activity as well as some intelligent paranormal activity. There's only one way to find out and that's to leave these cameras set up by themselves and see what happens when it is completely empty. Absolutely. Jason, you ready? Yes. Running on audio, this is a Bantam Hitman building second floor in the very back and what used to be a homeless shelter. Jason's setting up an audio recorder down there in that far room to see if there's any electronic voice phenomena or spirit voices that are captured while we're gone. Very weird that that kept going off. Yeah, it went off when I walked by, it went off when I walked by. Also, Antonio, the spirits that might be here, look at this. You can touch that and it'll let us know you're here. We're gonna leave now. We're leaving! It's a good one, Dave. <laughs>
Whoa. Hello? That is not me. Can you step away from that, please? Can you step back? Whoa. Thank you. Who's up here with me? My name is Ryan. And we're going to be here all night, so thank you for touching that and letting me know that you're here. We're going to come back up here in a little bit. Just a couple of minutes. We're going to bring more stuff. We're going to find a way that you can talk to us, so... So we are starting off this night going upstairs. When I was collecting the abandonment camera from up here, the mel meter just out of the blue started going off. And then I told them to step back away from it and on command it stopped going off. So I think there may be someone or something up here that might communicate with us. So we'll see. And remember too, earlier when we were setting up, the one cat ball was going off. That was kind of peculiar. Yes. Action cam is rolling. Whoa, what, what? Was that you? That was not me. Whoa. What happened? The flashlight just turned something on? Something stepped in front of that light. Yeah, that only does that if something goes in front of it. Something just stepped in front of that light. I was filming that direction, I'm pretty sure. Action cam is rolling. Whoa, what, what? Was that you? That was not me. Whoa. What happened? The flashlight just turned Something on? Something stepped in front of that light. Whoa, what, what? Whoa, what, what? Now watch as I walk by this. Okay. It's a feature built into this flashlight. See it get dim? Yeah. So it was like something walked in front of it. Yeah. Ooh, that was weird. <laughs> That's cool. That is creepy. I think we should put the mail right there. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, there's something up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we haven't been up here in three minutes. That was cool. We all saw that. Mm -hmm. That was... Gave me chills. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good start. We brought your favorite toy back. There's also another one right here in the center of the floor that works just like that one that you set off when I was up here just a few minutes ago. I forgot the audio. Okay. Jason's gonna roll on his audio recorder here so that we can try and capture electronic voice phenomenon or EVP, which is believe that spirits can speak at certain frequencies. Second floor, old homeless shelter. That our ears can't hear. Session. Is there anyone from the Pocahontas what fuel company? Fuel company here? We're not here to invade your space, or I know we're probably strangers, but we're here out of respect. My name is Ryan, and that's Dave and Jason over there. We're here for you to tell your story to us. The story of your life. If you'd like to come out and Tell us some of the stories of when you worked here or came in here for work. Can you try and trigger one of our devices to let us know you want to talk?
Can you try and trigger one of our devices to let us know you want to talk? Look at that thing he's carrying with the lights on it. You can use that to communicate with us. Just like that, how I did, how I touched it and it lit up. They called this place the castle in the coal fields. And this place was infamous. You know, we've traveled a little distance to be here tonight in hopes of speaking with you. Would someone like to come say hello? Did you hear that? I did. Was that your stomach? No. No? I heard it. It came from right over here. Mm -hmm. it sounded like a voice. If that was you we heard a moment ago. Could you speak louder, please? You know, we made a new friend today. His name is Dave. And he's trying to make sure that this building is not forgotten. That your story isn't lost. He's trying to make sure that someone else can buy this building. Did you hear that? Yeah. I was right behind you. It was a knocking sound from one of these offices here. Yeah. And that someone else can keep the castle and the coal fields alive. and fix this place up. Would you like that? Let me just try something here. I'm gonna move this to where it was at whenever I came up here. Wait for it to reset. Okay. I have this box in my hand right here that if you walk up to it, we should be able to hear your voice and you can speak your name or anything you want us to know. What is the name of this building? What was your job here? Is this where you came to get your job in the coal mine? Is this where you came to work? If there's anyone down at the bottom of the stairs, come on up and speak to us. You can use the energy of the rain to communicate with us. If 
there's someone here who wants to speak, come through now and say hello or else I'm going to shut this box off. Very quiet, not a single thing coming through. No. It's very bizarre and strange to me that I came up here to get the abandonment stuff and the mel meter was going crazy and responsively backed away from it when I told it to. We came up here, the very strange thing happened with your flashlight where it dimmed yeah. like something was passing in front of it. But since that happened, really we haven't had any definitive unexplainable experiences up here. No. Very odd. Yeah, it is. You want to grab the stuff, move down to the floor below and see if there's anything down there that will speak to us? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's go. We've moved down here to the first floor to try and communicate with somebody who might still be here. And some of this equipment that we have set up, all these lights and gadgets everywhere, they're here for you so you can let us know that you're here. Can you do that by trying to touch one of them? All around here, not only do we have these lights, but if you find the little ball, the little toy ball that we set up all over, there's a few of them around. You can make them flash, but you know what they're really fun to do? It's really fun if you pick them up and throw them. We kick them around all the time. You can do that too if you'd like. Just to show us that you're here. Anybody here work for Consolidated? We'd love to hear your voice. You had to be a tough son of a to work in the coal mine. Going down there into the mine every single day, not knowing if you were going to come back above ground alive. Can you, can you answer me if you can hear this? Whoa, cat ball. There we go. Can you push that right off of there? Roll it right out of that window. Like I said, those are fun to throw. Just give it a good push. And it wasn't Jason knocking. Knock on there again, Jason? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It wasn't. Besides, it was kind of a delayed reaction anyway. Mm-hmm. But what if something knocked down there to finish? See. Let's try this again. I'm not sure if I heard you. Can you answer me here? There's probably a lot of people that worked in here that needed a shave and a haircut. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Are you saying you need a shave and a haircut? You would be the first person to ever push that off of there for us. Can you do that? And then we can see about that shave and a haircut. How about that? You got to have two pins. Hmm. Very weird timing for that to light up. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just wish they'd push that right off of there. It's not like we'd be upset or anything. No.
I'm sure if you worked in the coal mines, you heard that old song. How does it go? 16 tons? You load 16 tons, what do you get? Another day older and... Things are very quiet. They are. Yeah, and they apparently don't like Tennessee Ernie Ford. <laughs> it is quiet though. It is. What do you think we shake it up a little bit? How so? Well, everyone's been missing Jason and wants to see Jason. So I think Jason needs to go on a solo mission by himself down into the basement of the old company store building over there. <laughs> what do you think, Jason? Hey, I'm ready. Let's set up some equipment in there for him and then we'll send him in there with a camera. See what he can get. Okay. All right, any spirits in here, you hear that, we're sending Jason in by himself. So we want you to come out and talk to him. All right, so we're gonna leave Jason in here uh, to explore this room by himself. Brian and I are gonna go out and sit in the car and we're gonna be filming from out there just so you know that nothing weird is going on, right? Yep, we're gonna be out there in the car and we're gonna film ourselves out there and hopefully Jason, you have something happen while you're in here. Hopefully so. You ready? I'm ready, let's do it. Good luck. It'd help if I have my audio rolling. It's January 23rd, I've been building solo in the basement of the company store. Hide now. It's really comforting when I'm just now starting my solo and it's saying to hide now. Well, hello, my name is Jason. I've just come along tonight to hopefully get to meet you, maybe speak with you. Where it's raining outside, I, I can't hear too well, so if you'd like to speak with me, can you talk as loud as you can, please? All right, so Dave and I are out here in the car and Jason is officially alone. Yes, he is. And hopefully he is gonna get some activity down there. This building is very, very creepy. It is very creepy. It, uh, I'm excited to see uh, what happens for him in there. It's been a long time since we've had Jason along on an investigation. So hopefully uh, he'll get the crap scared out of him. <laughs> hopefully. It's really dark in here. I'm trying to move Ooh, a little carefully. Ooh. Hello, I, I mean you no harm. I'd just love to get to meet you. Did you work in the coal mines? Prison. That was really weird. The ghost tube just said prison. Hmm. Were you in prison? Have you been to Moundsville? For those who don't know, Jason is a tour guide at the former West Virginia Penitentiary in Moundsville, and we organized the paranormal convention at the prison. With all of our close involvement with the penitentiary, could we have an attachment that's followed us here? This ghost tube response could just be random, but what will happen on our next session after oh, Jason's oh, solo dude. will leave us speechless. Did you make a dumb choice and end up at Moundsville? Tell me your story. God. <laughs> like I say, I can't see nothing in here. I just brushed into a, a cable. Tell me your story.
Don't be shy. I love to hear stories. Now, one thing interesting about this session that Jason's conducting right now is that he has the structure light sensor camera, the SLS camera, and it uses these infrared lasers whenever it senses, whenever the program senses that there is something shaped like a human in front of it. It will map using a stick figure mapping. I'm sure you all have seen it. I'm sure that you've seen the SLS camera in many different places. Oh, yeah. It'd be very interesting, being that it is stationary, sitting on a tripod, if something popped up on that screen and mapped, that would be very bizarre and unexplainable. It would be, and I'm excited to use it because we haven't used that in a, in a long while. Yeah, it's been months since we've had that, mm -hmm. had that camera out, so. I love history, and you were a part of the history here. Just heard a metallic tang come from the, the back of this area. It could have been water though, I'm not sure. If there's anyone here that would like your portrait taken, if you like a picture, I have a camera behind me. If you stand in front of this camera, I'm happy to take your picture. I'm coming. Come on over. Get your picture. Just stand right over here if you would. And then I'll take care of you. Get you a nice portrait. Friend. Portrait. Ooh, the hair on the back of my neck just stood up. Thank you so much. I'm happy to take your portrait for you. Just going to take a little bit of time to get it developed. What is your name? I'd love to know your name, know where you're from. If you have any family or co-workers, your friends, who would like a photo, tell them to come on down here. We'll do you upright. How long did you work for the Pocahontas Fuel Company? I think I'm hearing voices. It's one thing about the water when it's raining. In these old buildings, sometimes the sound of the rain can kind of play tricks on you and make you think you're hearing things. I think whenever Jason's done, it would be really cool if we could go and do an Estes Method Spirit Box session in the area where the story used to be. Oh yeah, that well, would be cool just to see if there's any energies that will come through and speak to whoever's listening on the headphones and to see if any of the answers that come through when the person listening is in full sensory deprivation to see if answers come through that are actually relevant to the questions being asked. Yeah. I know a lot of guys had to start working in the mines as soon as they got out of school. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing tonight? Behind you. Well, if you could stand in front of me, I'd rather talk to you that way. You know? Hell. Uh, 
this is getting a little creepy down here. I could have swore, and it, it may just be me freaking myself out. I could have swore I just heard something behind me. If you like, can you make a noise for me that I can hear? If you don't want to speak or it's hard for you to speak. Are you okay? I'm doing all right. How are you doing tonight? You know, you had these people going in to these mining situations with very little protective equipment, with headlamps that were literally on fire. <laughs> yeah. Knowing how flammable the coal was around them and the smallest spark could set off a blaze that was deadly and unstoppable. Mm -hmm. So it took guts. I couldn't do it. To go into there. And hopefully one of those people that may still be sticking around here, hopefully they'll be comfortable enough or brave enough to come out and tell their story. I hope so. Whoa, sh see, just about <laughs> twist my ankle. Okay, that was inside this building. Poisoned. That was inside this building. I don't know if that's a, a real person. Clear. Hello? Oh God, I was actually just about to come running out of here because I, when y'all closed the door, I thought it was upstairs. And I said, there's somebody in this building. Oh God. Okay, coming across. Did anything happen in here? Um, a lot of creepy ghosted Really? It said prison, which I thought was really weird. And then I told them if they want their portrait, they can stand in front of the camera over there and get a nice photo. At one point it said portrait. Oh, really? And then it said friend. <laughs> oh, wow. oh man. Yeah. And I've, yeah. It's like the longer I've been in here, it's, it doesn't feel bad, you know? And yeah. it's asked me twice how I'm doing. Really? What, what was that? Was that you? I didn't hear anything. Did you just say really? I did. Dave did. <laughs> God, I thought I heard someone else's voice though behind yours. Oh, yeah. See, like I'm a little on edge because it, it, it's something, it's, it's still creepy. I mean, I don't get a bad vibe. Yeah. But those intelligent responses, I wasn't ex expecting. It'll be interesting to um, watch that back. But for right now, do you want to head upstairs above our heads in this building and do an Estes Method Spirit Box session, Jason? Sure. Hell yeah. Conduct one and see if we can get any intelligent responses that way. Let's do it. That'll be interesting. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Make sure. All right, I am ready. Can you tell Ryan over there what your name is? He's using a radio, so he'll be able to hear your answers. Me? Yes, you. What is your name? Here. Hey, where are you? We can't see that well in here. Well, cat ball. There you go. There you go. Maybe that's where they are. Maybe. Thank you for setting that that light off like that. Hold, and then it sounded like someone said four right here. Whoa. See, you see it flashing. When you do that, that lets us know that you're here with us. Something in front of me? We'd like to give you a chance to tell your story. 
don't get it or something like that. Did you hear something? No. Is someone smoking? I smell cigarette smoke. I, I'm not. I got a big whiff of cigarette smoke there. Not unless it's out on the street. That's really weird. Yeah. Because that's a very distinct smell. He's got a blindfold on, right? He does. Okay, I'm going to walk over the window, make sure no one's on the street. Okay. Just, you know. Yeah. Because then a little bit ago, I thought I heard like something out front. Can you please tell Ryan what your name is? We would love to know. Susan? Wow. Well, hello, Susan. Susan, did you work here in this building? Food. Susan, can you tell us how old you are? No. I mean, that is a rude question to ask a woman, isn't it? I'm sorry. Oh, I thought I just heard a man say prison. That was weird. Oh, wow. Why does prison keep coming through here? I don't know. Were you locked up in the state pen? Moundsville. That was weird. <laughs> Dude. Man, I'm telling you. I'm starting to wonder if it's, I don't know if it's me. It could be me, Ryan, you. Did we, did you follow us here from Mounds? You. Dude, you, you. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of confirming what I didn't want to say out loud, but okay. These responses make what the ghost tube said in the basement even creepier. Prison. That was really weird. The ghost tube just said prison. We could write it off as a coincidence if it was just the word prison that came through the spirit box. Well, I thought I just heard a man say prison. That was weird. But when Dave asks, Were you locked up in the state pen? We receive the name of the city the state penitentiary resides in. Moundsville. That was weird. <laughs> Dude. Then they confirm that Jason brought them here. Man, I'm telling you. I'm starting to wonder if it's, I don't know if it's me. It could be me, Ryan, you. Did we, did you follow us here from Mounds? You. Dude. You. You. Could Jason have an attachment from working at the West Virginia Penitentiary? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Did you follow Jason here from Moundsville from the prison? Possibly. I don't even know what to say about that. I mean... It's not like a man said they hooked me, whatever, whatever that means. Okay, if you're one of the guys from the pen and you're with me here, then you probably know Ryan, you probably know Dave. Fought. 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 Tell Ryan yes or no if you followed me from the penitentiary or any one of us. Why do you mention Moundsville? Why do you talk about prison here? That's wild, man. That is very that is strange. Fucking wild. I feel like there's someone behind me. And I was just about to say, I'm getting this weird vibe. 
that I haven't gotten all night here, and it's something comparable. Hey. It's like the prison vibe. Yeah. Just a little bit. All right. Whoever just entered the room here with us, we know that you know how to communicate with us. So tell us your name, or make one of these devices go off, please. If you would like for us to just go and leave you alone, tell Ryan, leave me alone. Yeah. Whoa. One more time, just for confirmation. If you'd like for us to go, let Ryan over there know. Did you hear that? Mm. What is that? I just heard a male voice. That was multiple words over different frequencies of the same voice, but I couldn't make it out. Stay back. I thought I heard a man talking. I did too. Sound like someone said, kill him. Oh, shit, man. I don't see anyone with lights out there. If someone's out there, they've got to have a light. Did you hear that, though? I heard something that sounded like a man's voice. Yeah. And then he said he was hearing like a whole cacophony of voices all at once. Sound like a man said, F you. Yeah, I think it wants us out, man, because then it said kill him, and now it said F you. Are you angry at, with us? By the window or something? Oh, we're all standing by the window. We are. I smell cigarette smoke again. Very strongly. I do not smell cigarette smoke, and I have a very mm. strong nose for that. Were you a smoker? Mm, that was an interesting voice. Couldn't make it out, though. We don't want to bother you, so if you'd like for us to go, please just let us know. Just say the word leave to Ryan, and we will leave. I don't feel that energy anymore up here. I don't as much. Another one or something like that? I don't know. All the voices have become like very soft, almost inaudible. No, oh, it's weird. Yeah, you just said it's changed. <laughs> There's really been a lot of interesting, just in this session, a lot of interesting correlations. Yes. I need to take a little bit of a break for a second. Okay. Was any of that interesting? Uh, f yeah. Yeah, that was, wow. Just the correlations between, you know, that was just a lot of weird in a short amount of time. Yes. Relatively short. I mean, it was, um, yeah. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> what do I do with the blind? Oh, it's on my head still. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely a really cool place i mean we've pretty much covered the whole building at this point we have from top to bottom both sides basement upstairs so um there's definitely an energy in here that really i can't explain it's hard it's it's been difficult to pin down what and where it is. And that could also be due to the fact that nobody's investigated this place like this before. And 
as we all know, if you go into somewhere new, sometimes they're a little shy or it takes just a little bit of, of work to get the communication going. Yeah, for sure, for sure. This was a really cool experience and we wanna thank Dave, the realtor, for allowing us to come in here and do this, for giving us the opportunity and for being so cool and being so open to this idea of investigating the paranormal in what they called the castle in the coal field. So yes, definitely if anyone out there is watching this and you are really interested in restoring old buildings and you have the means to do it, this is definitely a really cool, really cool building and it deserves some love and attention. So if anyone out there that's watching can purchase the Itman Company store, contact Dave and uh, he'll get you set up with a tour of this place, whatever you need, so. Thank you to uh, the community of Itman and over in Mullins, everybody we met down here was so very nice and thank you for, for the warm welcome to the town here. Absolutely. But with that, we're gonna sign off here, but before we sign off, I think for the first time in a couple months, a few months, Jason, you gotta tell them what they have to do. Get right up in there and tell them. Guys, you already know the rundown. I'm going to give it to you again like this, okay? If you like the video, you hit like, thumbs up. We'd love it if you guys could get a 6,500 thumbs up on this video. Nevertheless, don't forget, hit subscribe. Don't forget bell notifications. Hey, stay tuned. We'll see you next time. Leave us a comment down below. We'll see you next time, guys. Peace. Bye.